By the end of this video, I'm going to reveal seven powerful money lessons that could be the key to building generational wealth and securing the financial freedom you've always dreamed of, not only for yourself, but for your family as well. And just a heads up, most people who actually do end up learning this are already well into their 40s and 50s or beyond. But if you want to stay ahead of the curve, whether you're just starting out or you've been at it for years, these lessons will help you avoid the costly mistakes that hold so many people back. And if you've been watching any of our videos on financial freedom and early retirement, you'll know that 80% of a person's success is based on their daily habits and a consistent plan to actually achieve their goals. Because let's be honest, as you get older and start to get that sinking feeling that you're running out of time to get your financial life together, or maybe you start wondering why some people seem to master the game of money while others stay trapped in the grind, struggling just to get by. Imagine this. You're sitting across the table from a friend at dinner and they casually mention their plans to retire by 50. You look at them in disbelief. How, you wonder? They don't seem to earn much more than you. They don't live extravagantly or talk about investing. Yet here they are calmly discussing early retirement like it's just another goal on their to-do list. If you keep watching, you'll have the exact same tools and insights to break free from the rat race and finally take control of your financial future. I'm going to walk you through seven money lessons that can set yourself up for financial success now and into retirement. Let's dive in. Number seven, pay yourself last. You might be thinking, wait, don't all the financial gurus say to pay yourself first? Well, I want you to flip that on its head. Let's talk about why paying yourself last could be even more powerful. When I say pay yourself last, I'm talking about making every dollar you earn work for you before it even reaches your pocket. Start by allocating your money towards your essential expenses, housing, food, utilities, then prioritize paying down debt, investing, and saving. Only after you set up your future do you engage in discretionary spending. Think of it like this. Every dollar that goes into your investments or savings is a soldier working to grow your wealth. The more soldiers you have working for you, the faster your wealth grows. By paying yourself last, you're making sure your money is being put to work first before it ever touches your hands. I had a friend who earned a six-figure income but was always broke by the end of the month. Why? He always spent on luxury items and entertainment first, leaving little for savings or investing. On the flip side, another friend on a more modest income practiced this pay-yourself-last rule religiously. Within a few years, he had enough invested to buy a rental property. It's not about how much you make, it's about how you manage what you earn. Now, I've only revealed the first key lesson, I'm just getting started. What I'm about to share next will be the most important rule you must follow before you can create an actual plan to master your finances. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Number six, the rule of 110. Now let's talk about how you should invest that hard earned money. The rule of 110 is a simple yet effective way to balance risk and reward in your investment portfolio. Here's how it works. Subtract your age from 110. The result is the percentage of your portfolio that should be invested in stocks or higher risk assets. The remaining percentage should be in safer assets like bonds or cash equivalents. For instance, if you're 30, subtract 30 from 110, which leaves you with 80. That means 80% 80 of your portfolio should be in stocks, while the remaining 20% should be in safer investments. As you age and get closer to retirement, you'll naturally adjust your portfolio to become more conservative, focusing on preserving your capital. A young couple I knew started investing aggressively in their early 20s, putting the majority of their portfolio in stocks using this rule. By their mid-30s, they had seen significant growth. Now in their 40s, they've shifted towards safer assets as they get closer to retirement, locking in their gains while continuing to grow their wealth. Number 5. The Three Dimensions of Wealth Wealth isn't just about money. In fact, focusing solely on financial wealth can lead to an unbalanced life. There are three dimensions of wealth. Financial wealth, time wealth, and health wealth. Financial wealth includes your income, your investments, and your net worth. Time wealth is the freedom to spend your time how you choose. Health wealth is the foundation. You can't enjoy financial success or free time if you're not healthy. Think about someone who works 80 hours a week to build financial wealth, but has no time to enjoy it. Or someone who retires early but spends their savings on medical bills due to poor health. True wealth encompasses all three dimensions, allowing you to live a balanced and fulfilling life. Number four, the 5% rule for retirement withdrawals. 
This rule is a game changer when it comes to enjoying a comfortable retirement without outliving your savings. It's called a 5% rule, and it recommends withdrawing no more than 5% of your total portfolio each year during retirement. So if you've accumulated $1 million in your retirement account, you should withdraw no more than $50,000 annually. This allows you to enjoy your retirement years without the fear of running out of money too soon. I knew a man who retired in his 60s with a large portfolio. He didn't cover the 5% rule and withdrew too much too quickly, thinking the market would always recover. But after a few bad years, he was forced to go back to work in his 40s. Contrast that with another retiree who followed the 5% rule. Her portfolio lasted well into her 90s. Number three, the categories of wealth. Let's break down the different categories of wealth because diversifying your income streams is essential for long-term success. There's earned income, your paycheck, passive income like rental income or dividends, capital gains, profits from investments, and inherited wealth. Each category plays a role in building a stable financial foundation. A good friend of mine once relied solely on earned income from his job. When he got laid off, he had no other income streams to support him. But after that experience, he started building passive income through investments and rental properties. The next time his job situation became uncertain, he had the financial stability to weather the storm. Keep watching because what you're about to find out next will be an important rule about money that schools simply don't teach us about when it comes to managing finances. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Number two, the importance of financial literacy. Here's something that's often overlooked, financial literacy. You can follow all the best money rules in the world, but if you don't understand how money works, you'll struggle to build and maintain wealth. Financial literacy means knowing how to budget, save, invest, and plan for retirement. The more you educate yourself, the better equipped you'll be to make informed financial decisions. I once met someone who made great money but had no idea how to invest. They left all their cash sitting in a low interest savings account, missing out on the opportunity for growth. After taking the time to earn about investing, they started building a portfolio that's now growing steadily. Now after all six money lessons, You've learned to this point, if you don't understand this next simple concept, then everything you've learned in this video will be a complete waste of time. So take note of this. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Number one, debt versus leverage. Now let's talk about debt. Not all debt is bad, but it's crucial to understand the difference between debt and leverage. Debt is borrowing money with no return, like credit card debt that piles up interest. Leverage, on the other hand, is borrowing money to invest in something that will generate income or appreciate in value like real estate. A friend of mine used leverage to purchase rental properties. The income from the properties covered the mortgage and over time, the properties appreciated in value. Meanwhile, another friend maxed out their credit cards on things that didn't generate income, and it took years to recover financially. One used debt wisely while the other was weighed down by it. These are the seven essential money lessons that can help you take control of your financial future. Whether it's paying yourself last, mastering the art of asset allocation, or understanding the true dimensions of wealth, these strategies can guide you to financial freedom and long-term success. In fact, if you need a better understanding of exactly what separates the rich from the poor and middle class, we've created an entire video that explains just that. Click the video on the screen now and we'll see you in the next one.